All right, so for positive selection, um, T cells are kind of different from what we had with B cells. With B cells, we had negative selection first and then positive selection. But in this context, we have positive selection first, then negative selection. So for T cell receptors, because of their genetics, they're going to be biased towards interacting with MHC molecules anyways, right? Because they co-evolve together, right? So cortical epithelial cells express high levels of both MHC class 1 and 2 molecules, which is good. Double positive thymocytes that do not bind to the MHC molecules on cortical epithelial cells are, die, are going to die. And this is a lot of them. This is 95% of them. So double positive thymocytes that do bind are positively selected for survival. They're proliferating, and they're going to undergo development. So what are we doing in positive selection? Well, we just want to make sure that we have T cells that are going to interact with and they're going to bind to MHCs. We want to make sure that they're going to identify the MHC and interact with the MHC. We don't really care about the peptide that's in those MHCs yet. We just want to make sure that the T cells can interact with the MHCs. Okay, so apoptosis is not immediate if a thymocyte fails to bind to an MHC molecule. T cells are valuable. Lymphocytes are extremely valuable. We put a lot of resources into just to get them to this point. So instead of alpha chain, instead the alpha chain is going to continue to rearrange for the next three to four, di three to four days thus improving its chances for survival because the alpha chain has so many of those J segments it can keep doing this. The thymocytes that are positively selected are going to migrate towards the medulla for further development selection. So thymocytes that bind to the MHC molecules on the uh, CEE, CEC stands for cortical epithelial cells. Uh, these receive survival signals that are sufficient to promote further development and at this stage of development the thymocytes are really responsive to signals generated through the T-cell receptor complex. Self-peptides are restricted mainly to those of the thymic origin. So, yeah, the MHC molecules do have self-peptides in them, self-peptides that they've been able to find in the thymus because they come from CECs, cortical epithelial cells in the thymus. But that's not really what's important. What's important is that you understand that we're making sure that these T-cells are going to bind and react with MHC molecules, right? And that's what this is about. So, as you may have imagined, this positive selection here, or one MHC molecule can bind to approximately 10,000 different peptides, what do you do? But positive selection here controls CD4 and CD8. Why? Because positive selection is all about MHC complexes. So CD4, I don't know if you don't remember, that is MHC, hopefully you can see that, type 2, CD8 is MHC type 1. So this is where they're going to lose that their double positivity and become single positive. Okay, so T cell receptor is going to bind to class 1 and then allows interaction for CD8 molecule with MHC1 and then CD4 class 2. This, that's review, right? You should know that. Positive selection. So the non-binding co-receptor is no longer produced, right? So that's what we're selecting for. We're selecting for whether or not we're going to become CD8 or CD4, right? And so if, say for example, we have an antigen present, or we're binding to an MHC molecule and the CD8 works great, but it, the CD4 not so much, that determines whether or not it's going to become a cytotoxic T cell or a helper T cell. And um, this is process ensures that the mature T cell will have a co-receptor that binds to the same class of MHC molecule as its T cell receptor. Sweet. Okay, so negative selection. We, we've gone and we've differentiated into the helper T cells or cytotoxic T cells, at least at the base level here, we have make sure that we know that the T cell receptor and the co-receptor are on the same page and that they do inner work and do work well with the um, major histocompatibility complex proteins. Now we need to make sure that we're removing all of the T cells that are going to identify our own cells as foreigners and invaders and, and kill our own cells. So this is the, the, I guess, the really super selective processes here. So a process whereby thymocytes with high affinity receptors, high affinity receptors for the self are eliminated by apoptosis. This takes place at the corticomedullary junction, and this is mediated by medullary epithelial cells, to a lesser extent, but for the most part, dendritic cells and macrophages. Uh, medullary thymocytes are far less responsive to signals generated through the T cell receptor complex than those of cortical thymocytes. And that's important, right? 
so thus requiring a higher affinity interaction with MHC peptide complexes to generate a response. Those thymocytes that bind strongly to the MHC complexes receive suicide signals, they're going to kill themselves, and then the thymocytes that have a moderate binding are going to finalize their development and exit into the periphery. It's all just a grading scale here, and nothing is ever an all or nothing phenomenon in, in these type of situations here. So negative selection is going to remove T cells that are going to kill your own cells if they're released into the tissue. That's kind of a nice thing that we have to deal with. But you may be wondering, well, how do we make sure that, say, for example, diabetics, um, the beta cells of the pancre pancreatic uh, Langerhans or the pancreatic eyelids, I'm not uh, big on anatomy and physiology so much anymore, but how do we make sure that they don't attack that? How do we make sure that my own immune system doesn't attack my joint cells or something else like that? Something that's not found in the isolated cocoon of the thymus. Well, there's a transcription factor known as AIRE, and I'm not going to know what that, I'm not going to pronounce the uh, <laughs> words that the acronym means, but this causes the medullary epithelial cells to transcribe several hundreds of tissue specific genes. So this is why me, it, my, you know, I, me, I don't have arthritis, which is awesome, right? Because my T cells were exposed to um, um, the arthritis self antigen and either killed themselves upon activating it or didn't activate to it at all, right? However, if you are allergic to arthritis, then that's part of the, the, the came in all of this. Or if you do have arthritis, or you're not allergic to arthritis. God, I'm so tired. Anyways, this is known as an autoimmune regulator. So small amounts of these tissue-specific proteins are now going to be present in the thymus. And the peptides that are derived from these proteins can be bound by MHC molecules and participate in the process of negative selection. Um, MECs are also express other transcriptional factors. This stands for medullary uh, epithelial cells. Um, they're also going to express other transcriptional uh, regulators as well. The pool of promiscuity expressed within these cells is 10% of our whole genome. 10%. That is, that is so much. That is an, almost enough to, to accompany an entire human body, um, save for parts of the brain and parts of the testes, really. Um, we also have something else, though, that we can use to help us, besides from, from uh, regulatory proteins. We have naturally occurring T regulatory cells. And again, I think that these were vestigial in origin, but that's just my opinion. They're a distinct lineage of CD4 positive T cells. They're very self-reactive. And they express high amounts of expressing high amounts of CD25 and Fox P3 proteins. Um, they do not proliferate in response to MHC self-peptide complex. So this would be happening, I guess, during the process of negative selection. I'm sorry, positive selection. Ugh crazy at this point in the day. But they suppress the activation of conventional CD4 T cells that are self-reactive. Um, and so the NT regulation interaction with the autoreactive T cells induces in production and release of interleukin-35, which is going to suppress its activation. Um, the, this isn't really important. So much to understand that they're going to kill autoreactive T cells. And if you're noticing here, it's going to be through the process of contact inhibition. This is happening on an antigen presenting cell, so if it's happening on an antigen presenting cell, then we're probably speaking here about negative selection. First we have is positive selection. Positive is if successful. If they pass the positive selection, they're going to move on to the negative selection. Positive selection, we want to do two things. We want to have CD4 slash CD8 single positive. There's only one positive there, so we say single positive in that complex. And we also want to make sure that our T cells our T-cell receptors can work well with the MHC. This is happening at the medullary cortex junction, medullocortex junction or cortomedullary junction, the point where the medulla and the cortex meet each other. So if it interacts with MHC class 1, if this has very strong binding, strong affinity with this, um, then it's going to develop an overall differentiate into a CD8 positive. And whereas if this were weak, weak, then we're going to just go ahead and kill him. He's going to die by apoptosis. And by the same notion, we have if it can interact with MHC class 2, this interaction or this affinity, if you can think of it, is weak, then it's going to kill him. And if it is strong, then he's going to differentiate into a CD4 positive, single positive, helper T cell. All right, so for negative selection, we really only have one job. We want to make sure that we kill the cells that would originally be auto-reactive, that would be team killers. This thing tends to happen 
takes place at the medulla. So we have some specific cells that are involved in mediating this processes here. And there's there's really just two types that are, ta I, I consider them primary and then secondary in terms of the importance of their job. Primaries are the most important, secondaries are the most, are the least important. Secondary are just the thymocytes themselves um, and the epithelia, thymocytes and the uh, Gosh, that's an S. Thymocytes in the in the ordinary organized regions there, and then for the primary we have macrophages and dendritic cells. Macrophages. Um, noticing that these guys are professional antigen presenting cells, right? And both of these guys, I'm just going to kind of put them together because they are going to be doing the similar function here, whereas with the macrophages have another function, which is that of the cleanup crew. But for dendritic and in and for the macrophage as well, these are antigen presenting cells. And in this context, they will be presenting two types of antigens. Self antigens from the thymic environment, so self thymic cells. So cells that are available in the thymus that the dendritic cells have sampled up in their environment. And then also though, tissue specific self peptides. And though this whole thing is accomplished by the AIRE, or otherwise known as the autoimmune regulator. And this just causes medullary epithelial cells to tissue-specific cell peptides, right? So that we make sure that our T cells are not only killing the foreigners, but they're not going to kill our own cells.